Hey everyone, this is Jason Hodge at Medical Fitness Pros, and I want to talk briefly about osteoporosis, osteopenia, um, exercises related to that. I know a lot of times, uh, well, we have a lot of clients that have been coming in, and they just, they've got issues with osteoporosis, osteopenia. So if you don't know what osteopenia is, there's basically there's different degrees of, of bone density loss over time. And so osteopenia is kind of the um, warning signs of what's to develop for osteoporosis. So you know osteoporosis, mm -hmm. there's not as much bone density as there needs to be. Um, and so you run into an issue where uh, the bones are a little bit more fragile, more chance of falling and breaking the bone, things like that. And so osteopenia is more of one of those things when they do a bone density scan, they realize there's not enough bone density there. There's a risk of everything, uh, of it developing a point where there's not enough bone density for the body. And, and a lot of times you find that in the hip and spine, and that's really the bigger issues that are occurring. So when, when we're looking at um, exercise related to it, a lot of people don't realize you can actually reverse bone density with exercise. Uh, it's got to be done properly, obviously. It's got to be done in a way that um, is safe. It creates more bone density. Um, it reduces the risk of, the, um, of injury as well. So, for instance, if, if you're going through and you're doing exercises, there's a chance that you're not going to just go in all out and do running and jumping and everything else because you're a little worried, right? I mean, you don't want to have an injury along the way. And so you, you kind of got this, this double-edged sword in that you know that you need to push the body and work out and build up bone density up. But at the same time, you're a little worried because if you push it too much, you don't want to get hurt along the way. So it's a little scary to find that balance between both sides. It's how do you push enough to make a, bone in, make a difference with bone density while at the same time um, challenge yourself enough that you make a difference. Hey, Jody, how's it going? Come on in. I'm just making videos, so it's, it's kind of quiet. So, you want to jump in the video? Nope. <laughs> okay. So, um, hey everybody, thanks for tuning in and watching. Um, okay, so let's talk briefly about this. And if you like, I'll do another video, give you more examples of exactly what to do um, in building this up. So, if I have a client that comes in with bone with osteoporosis, osteopenia, um, what I will often do is I'll look at things that relate to pushing and pulling on the spine and hip. So again, if you think about it, when it comes to osteoporosis, just talking about that in general, we're talking about the bone density of the spine and the hip. So how are you going to change the bone density of the spine and the hip? Well, you're going to do exercises that, pu that push and pull on those muscles connected to the spine and the hip. Does that make sense? So if I have someone doing um, a, a row or a squat or a leg press, things that involve the muscles in the hip and spine it does have an impact on bone density related to it over time. Now, here's the secret, and I need you to understand this. It's not going in the gym and doing sets of 30, 40 repetitions, uh, or 20 repetitions even. And, and not that you can't get some growth from that, but what we find according to studies is it really takes going through and doing heavier weights, lower repetitions to change bone density faster. So here's what I'm saying on this. If I'm going in the gym, and let's say I want to do a overhead press, which is very difficult, but basically an overhead shoulder press. I want to find a way that challenges and stresses out the, the spine and, and basically works on those muscles around it. But I want to use a weight that's heavy enough that I'm only doing eight to 10 repetitions, maybe even five to six repetitions over time while still doing it properly and still challenging the body in the right way. So the key on this is progression over time. It's not that you're suddenly going to walk in the gym, first day out, go, set, go really heavy, sets of four or five reps, six reps, and really overdo it because that's going to create injury because you're not going to have the stability that you need for that to happen. What you're instead going to do, walk in, start off with high repetitions, get your form down, get used to the motion, find ways to do it that aren't painful, that don't hurt. Over time, over a period of two to three months, Work your way up to where you're doing higher weight, heavier weight, lower reps, so that you're really challenging that spine, challenging the hip in different ways so that you're actually making a difference long term. And so if you have osteoporosis, osteopenia, that's really your best bet. And we have seen clients that have come in, they're not on, they have mental medication, not that I'm suggesting that. Follow your doctor's advice, please. But just as, as an example, I know I've had clients come in, we've had them check their bone density before and after a really good solid strength training program. Over a period of three to four months, we actually saw their bone density increase and go from osteoporotic, being osteoporotic 
to no longer being osteoporotic over a period of time. So it is very possible to use strength training to reverse osteoporosis, osteopenia, and build that bone density back up. The key is how you do it, how you progress through it. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. I'll be glad to go back and, and uh, comment on those. If you'd like to see a video with more specific exercises, uh, let me know that as well, and I'll be glad to go back later on and shoot another video uh, a little more specific for that. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Appreciate y'all watching, and um, I'd be glad to help y'all. Thanks a lot.